Intel's not going to be recalling their CPUs. The DJI drone doesn't appear to be happening, and AMD's CPUs got pulled because they were going to sell you the wrong one. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Monday, July 29th, 2024, we're going to start off today talking about Team Blue in the news again, because while everything's been going on with the 13th and 14th gen CPUs that have been unstable, people have been having problems, there's still more details coming out from Intel as they've been giving more interviews. We know that a microcode update is supposed to be dropping in mid-August to potentially fix some of the instability that's going on in these chips. But then there's been more communication on how far does this reach? Will there be a recall as well as what are you supposed to do if you do have a problematic CPU? So Intel confirming in an interview with The Verge, surprising they did a, a good tech interview by the way. We can meme on their PC build all we want. This was actually very helpful for The Verge to go and contact Intel with regards to exactly what's going on with 13th and 14th gen. So number one, Intel's not saying specific numbers on how many chips are affected, but they do say that any processor that's 65 watts or higher is affected. So that's the K, the KF, the KS SKUs, and non-K variants could be affected by this voltage issue. Now that doesn't mean that all of those CPUs are having instability. It could be that because they're not actually pushing the voltage very high, it's, it's just not tweaking to be a problem at this point, but that doesn't mean that they're not suffering from that same microcode issue where the algorithm's boosting improperly. So it affects essentially every processor that most people have, even if it's an i5-13600K, even if you haven't experienced it yet, which is why the microcode update that's supposed to be dropping in mid-August is so important. Number two, Intel definitely saying that there is no recall happening here with their CPUs. Additionally, Intel will not be pausing sales on these CPUs, which is something that I personally understand from a business side, but also do not agree with when it comes to my ability to recommend these things to you when we're building a PC. And people say to me, hey, Brett, I just bought an i9-14900K. Should I send it back and get a, a Ryzen 9950X? The answer from my side is th the fix isn't out yet. You can't necessarily trust something that doesn't yet exist. Intel's promising that it's coming, but it's not here right now. So based on how things are currently, none of these chips are healthy enough to recommend to the end consumer. So the fact that they're still for sale does appear to be problematic. Additionally, when asked if they're gonna extend their warranties on these CPUs, especially with all of these known issues, no comment, there's no answer on that yet. Additionally, when asked what proof will customers need to submit in order to get an RMA, how lenient will Intel be? No answer on that. These are critical things that Intel needs to have answered at this point. We are months into this journey and the fact that they can't tell customers what to expect and how long they're gonna be covered for is in my opinion, not a good place for them to be and hurts their trust in all of this. But if you haven't had instability issues yet, there are mitigations that you can take, such as installing the Intel default baseline profile, as well as doing some other tweaking that you can find from various resources out on the internet. Roby Tech did a video with Intel where he documented some of these things that you could be doing. So you can prevent it from developing more if you haven't had it yet while we wait for the microcode update. But then when Intel was asked with regards to what should somebody do if they have it already, there's no reversing course. The degradation cannot be fixed by this microcode update, to which Intel says you should contact Intel for an RMA. And if you've had that rejected, they ask that you reach out to Intel customer support for further assistance in remediation. So that does help to address some of the comments that came out with regards to potentially some people getting denied RMA. They should just try again, but especially with Intel being mum on whether or not they're gonna extend warranty and them being mum on how lenient they're gonna be with CPU replacements through the RMA process, this is quite a frustrating place to be in, especially if I was the person who had my RMA denied, why would I trust that Intel's gonna make it good the second time around? Especially since technically nothing's changed. They've already known about this issue and that was the same situation when the RMA was denied. The instability was a known problem. So the fact that that happened in the first place tells me there's not clear communication going down to the customer support level. This appears to be a large issue for Intel. The fact that they're not recalling 
I don't know the logistics of what you need to justify a recall, but the fact that they're continuing to sell these chips when they're known faulty is also problematic, especially because the ones at retail right now still don't have the microcode update. Again, right now we're in that limbo period of, do we trust Intel that they're actually gonna deliver on this microcode update and it's actually gonna solve the problem when it does come out in mid-August? Because that's the only way this actually gets resolved. If this microcode patch comes out and doesn't do what Intel says it does, or it gets delayed into September or maybe even October, this is it's a terrible place for Intel at that point. So right now, a lot's riding on them delivering that microcode patch. So we'll see if that happens. But game developers aren't waiting in the meantime because some game devs who have said that they've had issues with Intel CPUs are now adding a crash pop-up to their game where if your game crashes, but you're running one of these Intel 13th or 14th gen CPUs, it will let you know that the problem is not with the game, especially when it comes to Unreal Engine games. The problem is your CPU. So this appears to be a problem for Intel. And again, we just have to wait and hope that they actually deliver on the microcode update. And DJI also has to wait and hope because we talked about previously that there was a drone ban that was being implemented against DJI as part of the Countering CCP Drones Act that was supposed to make it into the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act. But now it is no longer in the NDAA while it sits in the Senate. So this is good news for DJI as well as drone customers because it was estimated that up to 67% of drone businesses here in the US might have to close their doors if this DJI ban actually went in, but this still could potentially lead to the drone ban being re-put into the NDAA because it hasn't been passed through voting by the Senate. Additionally, it would have to then clear the president's desk as well. So there's still a few more steps where DJI kind of has to wait with bated breath that it doesn't get added back in, or if it does get added back in, that it then wouldn't pass, but just because it passed in the House doesn't necessarily mean that it's complete and now we wait to see a little bit more and I wait to see what deals Reese has for you. Deal them up, dealio master. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend and we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this Keychron C3 Pro TKL wired mechanical keyboard with red switches for only $24.99, making it $12 off. But then if you want a really nice matching headset, you can grab the HyperX Cloud 3 wired gaming headset for only $78.99, making it $21 off. And then lastly, we have this Ozopa 27 inch 14 40p 180 hertz IPS gaming monitor for only $139.99 with the coupon applied making it $60 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, the deal when it comes to CrowdStrike in Windows PCs is that as of Friday, 97% of the PCs affected by the CrowdStrike boot looping issue have been resolved. That's at least according to the CEO of CrowdStrike, who, as we know, hasn't necessarily been communicating everything very effectively, but Microsoft also coming out and talking about the fact that 5,000 support engineers have been working 24 seven in order to figure out all of these problems. Additionally, that Microsoft exec talking about some of the changes that potentially need to come to Windows in order to prevent something like this happening ever again. And a lot of it centers around kernel level access that happens with third party security vendors that other operating systems like macOS don't give to these companies, hence why macOS wasn't affected, even though they actually do run CrowdStrike because you can't actually access certain parts of the kernel on macOS, whereas with Microsoft, you can. And part of that is due to all of the antitrust legislation that's gone through in the EU with how Microsoft used to be back in the day. And part of that agreement appears to be that Microsoft has to continue to work with the providers to provide that level of access, whether or not that's actually true, or if that was just the presumptive interpretation of the dealings with everything that happened back in the 90s and early 2000s with Microsoft. It's not quite clear, but it does look like Microsoft might be taking this a little bit more seriously and pushing back on having to protect their operating system the same way that Apple does. And it looks like AMD is trying to protect their customers from getting the wrong CPU, because now reports are coming out as to why this chip launch of the Ryzen 9000 series got delayed until next week and the week following. And according to some reports now, it doesn't appear that it has anything to do with the quality of the silicon. It has nothing to do with instability issues, nothing like what Intel's dealing with. Instead, it has to do with the fact that they were printing the wrong numbers on the chips. As you can see right here, there's an image of a Ryzen 9 
9700X, which is the wrong version. It's actually a Ryzen 7. So that could potentially be the entire problem, especially since AMD's only formal communication on this has been that they did not meet our full quality expectations of the initial production units. Not necessarily talking about the performance, but potentially it being a typo. This was actually something that Dr. Ian Cutras said on Thursday, that it was a typo on the packaging that caused AMD to actually pull all of their CPUs for launch because it's not just the 97 700X. Tom's Hardware also got reports that a Ryzen 9 9600X was also spotted out in the wild, which could just create some confusion for the customers that you think you're getting a Ryzen 9, but instead you're actually getting delivered a Ryzen 5. There's also some reports that there have been printed 9900Xs that actually aren't a 9900X, so it's actually not just the Ryzen level was wrong, but for some processors, it was potentially the wrong printing on the CPU entirely. AMD's confirmed that this is just with the initial batch. This is not necessarily something that's affecting anything later on down the line. It's just some misprints that are happening, which if that's the case, this is great news for AMD. It's not necessarily a question of the silicon. It's just a matter of working with the companies, whoever print that on there to actually have that fixed and alleviate it. It would be one thing if AMD AMD accidentally sold a Ryzen 5 9600X and somebody put that in their system and they discovered it was a Ryzen 7, but instead it was gonna be the opposite where it's the higher end communicated that you're actually getting a lower end CPU. So if this is true, and it does appear to be from all indications, multiple different sources confirming this, Ian Kutcher is coming out and saying that before this had even broken publicly that that was the explanation. It bodes well for AMD that uh, we're gonna have these CPUs and they're gonna perform about as we expected and not necessarily necessarily going to run into any performance problems moving forward. And let's see how you guys performed in the comments on Friday's episode of Hot News. We got Kryptonite CB saying, besides the extras, the flow plane audio is so much better than whatever nonsense YouTube does to the compress the stream. One more reason it's a better value than subscribing on YouTube. And if EK makes a Battle Mage water block, I need a way to get you to sign it. That way I could put it on my wall next to the one I got signed at LTX 2023. Gotta get them all. Uh, well, I don't know how the audio is gonna sound, especially since uh, this vacation place we're staying in uh, has really echoey uh, spots. I could not find a better place in this entire area that we're staying in uh, right now to film better. So uh, if this sounds rough, I'm sorry, we did our best. But uh, yes, we'll figure out how to get a Battle Mage EK water block sign at some point. I mean, Linus just said LTX wasn't happening this year. It doesn't necessarily mean that there might not be a 2025. We'll see if that happens. Um, additionally, I don't think I addressed this at all. We are kind of on a workcation as a family right now, especially since my wife is expecting uh, baby boy number four uh, towards the end of this year. So we took one last like big vacation as a family. So I'm gonna be out on the road for the next little bit. Anybody who's been subscribed since like 2018, we did road trip videos for quite some time. I mean, Rickus probably still has some uh, trauma from that entire season of uh, me traveling the United States states. It's not quite that bad. We're staying in a few different places over the next few weeks, but Kyler's going to keep it locked down back at our office. I'm going to be uh, remoting from here for a little bit, and then we'll change it up as time goes on. But uh, thank you all for allowing me to have a job where I can take a vacation with my family, but also still uh, continue to stay up to date on everything that's happening in the tech sphere. But now let's head over to YouTube and look at what those comments were. We got Maxim saying, Black Mesa was technically 16 years in development, longer even than Half-Life Alex. Uh, Black Mesa is not a game, it's a mod. So. You know what, I, I went on a whole rant about the DeLorean not necessarily being a cool car and it's just nostalgia for Back to the Future. Black Mace is not, it's not a game, just, I'm just, I'm just gonna be uh, dismissive of your comment. And we got Goof8372 saying, do you know what happens when you get slapped in high frequency? It hurts. And then we got Schoolology library bot saying, I feel you. I got a whole 4070 super build sitting next to my desk waiting for the 9600X to come out. Oh, my friend. I like, oh man, that stinks. I, uh, I, I do feel like if I was in that situation, I would just get a 7600X from like a place that has a really good return policy and just build it 
and you know play until the 9600 comes x comes out and then you know return it it's like and they can sell it open box you know pay the restocking fee or whatever like you, you're not going to degrade the 9600 x over that little bit of time it's not a it's not an intel processor then we got super dazu saying same but waiting for a 9800 x3d so i don't have to change cpu until 2030. this is also something i want to talk about because i feel like i get compulsive upgrade disorder I, this is what we called it in South Africa on the Carbonite forum. It, it, it's CUD or CUD. When you get good hardware, you're just like, mm, I'm gonna upgrade again, I'm gonna upgrade again. If you're getting a 9800X3D, you sure? You sure you're gonna wait another five years? Because are you sure you're not gonna be like, you know what, I could probably sell this and get the, the 11800X3D. I could get the 13800X3D if I just flip this a little bit, or potentially, you know, you you just, you just continuously compulsively upgrade to the next thing. It it happens, man. If you're confident that you can wait until 2030, more power to you. We have people who come into our live streams all the time saying that they're on an i5 2500K, right? Like that they've held out forever, um, which props props to you if you've done that. But uh, once I got to the like the i7 level of being able to afford things, I couldn't stop myself from that point forward. And that's kind of why the channel happened. Then we got two dudes in the sky saying, holy cow, what have I been missing out on? I've been looking for a channel that can keep me up to date in this is the exact thing I've been looking for. Welcome, glad to have you. That's uh, that's our whole thing here, sort of. We're also changing some things behind the scenes to deliver more than just hot news. This has been a long process. It, we've been developing for almost a decade now. So uh, thank you for being here. We're looking forward to having you for the next little bit as well. And then we got Daniel saying, hot news, part of your balanced breakfast. There you go, UFD Tech. That's not even our slogan, man. You feel like you're giving me something when you're spelling breakfast? Man. Go back and watch the intro again. I don't say breakfast. I haven't said breakfast for ages. What do I say? All right, I'm gonna turn it off now, I'm done.